Hello chess friend. One of the big questions in chess is whether to open the game with e4 or d4. Objectively, both moves appear to be equally strong. However, for any given chess player, there might be a more or less clear indication of which move is preferable. If you have a good memory, powerful tactical skills and the dedication to work hard on your game, e4 might be your move. For the vast majority of chess players, however, I see more benefits with d4. It is much easier to play and there is considerably less theory to learn. Quite compelling arguments, I would say. For stronger players, there are even more advantages on the metagame level. While e4 has to be considered a standalone system, d4 can be used for a modular strategy. It can be combined with c4 or knight f3 on move 1 in order to move order your opponent or to circumvent undesired variations. The following game is a good example. Here we see white playing c4. Now black can, this is called the English opening as you will know. Now black can stay on English territory by playing either e5 or c5. This would be the symmetrical English. But he can also try <clears throat> to steer the game into d4 territory. The benefit of this strategy is that he wouldn't have to learn extra theory. So now black aspires to reach kind of an Indian position or even the queen's gambit declined by staying flexible with knight f6. White now answered knight c3. And now black has to make a decision. e6 was the game move. Another idea would be g6 in order to um, try to achieve the um, king's Indian or the Greenfeld Indian. Now it's white's choice. Will he comply by playing d4 or does he want to play a sideline? g3 bishop g7, bishop g2 would be a typical English sideline preventing the d4 territory. Now going back to knight c3, our black player opted for e6. He indicates that now after d4 he is either willing to play the Nimzu Indian, bishop b4, or d5, the queen's gambit declined. So now, what should white do? He could comply with black's intention or he can play a move like knight f3. Knight f3 is um, preventing the Nimzu Indian. If black now played bishop b4, white then would not play d4 but queen c2, let's say castles, a3, bishop c3, queen c3 and this position can be considered plus equal. White will defer the move d4 and instead play let's say b4, uh, bishop b2 and then maybe e3 and that is quite a good strategy as white is speeding up his development and doesn't suffer from the typical disadvantages uh, of the queen c2 variation in the Nimzu Indian. Now there is another move here beside d4 or knight f3 because after knight f3 which I just showed black had, could still play d5 and after d4 we would be in queen's gambit declined territory. Here after move 2 white has an interesting alternative to keep the game inside English territory by playing e4. This is called the Mikenas variation. 
It is quite competitive, very dynamic, and it prevents Black from playing his usual anti-D4 variations. Now, there are two basic answers. One is C5, after which White should play E5, Knight G8. This looks a bit illogical, but the E5 pawn is quite exposed there. So this retreat with a knight does make sense. Now, if White wants to play for an advantage, he has to sacrifice a pawn. Knight C6, and now D4 is the best move. Takes, takes, Knight E5. So this is a pawn sacrifice. Now White plays Knight uh, DB5. The neuralgic square in this variation is the point D6, as you can see. Now I just give you a bit of a taste of this variation by diving straight into the main line without looking left or right. A6, check. So now White has the bishop pair and Black obviously has problems on the dark squares. F6, defending the knight. Bishop e3, knight e7, bishop b6. This is not winning the queen as a black has the intermediate move knight f5 available. Queen b4, knight c6 again attacking the queen. And after knight c5, we can conclude with plus equal. The, three, <clears throat> the theory goes much deeper, but this is good enough for our purposes here. Now in our game, um, black played d5. This move is more common and I think it is the better move. Now white could take on d5. This would be an alternative to the game. cd5, e5. But this is outside the scope of our video. Instead white played e5 directly. Now black only has one good move. d4. An intermediate move. If he touches his knight, white gets the better of it. For instance, after knight e4, question mark, knight f3, white is slightly better no matter what comes. If the knight retreats to d7, white gets even more advantage. cd5, knight e5, d4. Knight g6, takes, takes. And now after d5, black is forced to retreat with his bishop all the way to square one. So bishop c8, but after h4, in order to molest the knight with h5, white is clearly better. Let's have a look what happens if black doesn't want to play bishop to c8. Bishop f5 appears to be more logical, but um, has a tactical flaw in it. Queen e2 check is now the best move. And now black would have to play queen e7, but white would be clearly better. Bishop e7 appears to be logical, but it is bad because after queen b5 check, black is losing material. For instance, queen d7, queen takes b7, attacking the rook. So what happens after knight d7? This is a big question because after queen b7, Black could, uh, for instance, castle, followed by knight c5, and he would have a Latin development. But the problem is the move d6 with a double attack on both bishops, winning a piece. For this reason, the knight uh, fd7 line is bad. The only good move here is d4, an intermediate move. White takes, black takes takes, takes. Now <clears throat> white has to decide between knight f3 and d4. After d4 black should play e5 and then knight f3 would transpose to our game. In our game black uh, was confronted with white playing knight f3 outright. Now black did the right thing by playing e5. A decent alternative would be the move b6. That, however, would be c5, d4, and here white has 
a slight advantage no matter what black does after that now after knight f3 e5 white played d4 but here i would prefer the move bishop d3 as a white player the idea is to castle uh, move the bishop to e4 and the rook to e1 the pawn e5 then would be under pressure the bishop from e4 could take a knight on c6 after which the e5 pawn might be vulnerable also the bishop on e4 overprotects the knight f3 should black play his bishop to g4 intending to take on f3 uh, inducing doubled f pawns now we have a bishop on e4 preventing just that white can also later come up with d2 d4 by deferring d4 white speeds up his development and also avoids lines based on e takes d4 c takes d4 bishop b4 check because white castles before he plays d4 but in our game white played d4 instead of bishop d3 now black should play uh, knight c6 actually this move equalizes but it is not the kind of equality which gives black an easy game I, I give you some lines here so we can see for yourself so one move would be bishop g5 queen g6 d5 knight has to go back to b8 h4 threatening h5 h6 h5 queen a6 bishop e3 knight e7 and this position is pretty unclear the engine says equality black has a better pawn structure but white has more active pieces the main line after knight c6 is bishop e2 instead of bishop g5 now black takes bishop g5 queen g6 and now white can take on d4 but after bishop b4 the game is equal because white now has a choice between bishop d2 after which black can um, trade the bishops or king f1 which is a bit ugly to play so that is only equal a more enterprising is the move castling here allowing black to take on c3 but as you can see white has a clear lead in development now white is threatening bishop d3 winning the queen so bishop e7 has to happen queen, um, bishop d3 queen d6 c5 that's a good move queen takes c5 takes takes rook e5 so now white is gaining more time queen d6 i only give you one straight line because this is not a theory m video on the mckinnis variation I, I just want to give you a short overview so this is just one straight line without any um, alternatives check king f8 there's no better move queen e2 uh, preparing to tr to triple in the e file or to play rook d1 rook d1 is uh, the, the main threat here with uh, <clears throat> mate on d8 to come so f6 rook d1 there it goes um, fe5 takes looks a bit chaotic i know but i i want to make it quick here in this um, side variation and here we see uh, just finishing of this variation by the repetition of moves so this could be one of the lines but as you can see black has to make his homework this is a good example for the dynamics of the Mikenas variation but in our game black made a mistake here he didn't play knight c6 he took on d4 looks like a normal move because black is intending to play bishop b4 check after c takes d4 but white has something more dynamic at his disposal bishop g5 attacking the queen queen is six check there's nothing better bishop e2 so white is developing um, his forces with speed he wants to castle 
followed by rook e1, when the queen on e6 and the king on e8 would be very exposed. In this position, black has to be very accurate. There are two decent lines, which however lead to slight advantage for white. So one would be bishop e7, c takes d4, so white has his pawn back, takes, takes, and you can see for yourself, white has a space advantage and a let in development. So this is a slight advantage for white, half a pawn or a bit more. The other move would be h6, knight takes d4, attacking the queen, queen e5, bishop h4, bishop e7, bishop g3, queen a5, castles, castles, rook e1. And here white has a slight advantage because of his better development and resulting better peace activity. The center, by the way, is called an open center. In the 80s, uh, the Russian writer Kolmov has classified uh, all center structures. So this is an open center because there are no pawns on the D file and the E file. In an open center, it's not that much about a pawn structure or pawn play. Um, of course, black has a better pawn structure as white has a doubled pawns, as you can see. But this is of secondary importance. In an open center, it's more about peace play. And white is better mobilized, as you can see. Now, none of, it, of this happened in our game because black made a mistake. He played f6. It is understandable to play this move because the bishop on g5 is uh, placed annoyingly there for black. So black wants to chase it away. Um, this, however, is not a good idea. But it's not like um, a typical blunder uh, or extremely stupid because it was played in 166 games by strong players. And our player here, Riyad Sansev, is very strong. Um, nowadays he has more than 2600 ELO. So f6, why is that bad? White now answered with knight d4 and black has to play queen f7. If he played instead queen e5 after bishop h4, white would already be winning because his um, mobilization, mobilization of forces, his lead in development is too big for black to face. For instance, bishop d6, bishop g3, queen e7, castles, castles, bishop f3 with rook e1 to come attacking the queen. And you can see here, Black's queen is exposed on e7 in the e5. The king g8 is exposed on the a2 g8 diagonal. And black cannot really mobilize his queen side anymore. In our game, black played queen f7 instead. So not uh, he didn't play queen e5, he played queen f7. Now think for yourself, what would you play here? I can tell you the move bishop f4 would lead to a clear advantage for white. It would be good enough um, to prove that this line is very favorable for white. But as it happens, there is an even stronger move here. Now think for a while, press on pause, because now I will reveal this solution. It is our topical move, bishop h6. And actually, bishop h6 is a freezer motive. The motivation behind this move is to freeze black's king side, to prevent black from castling short. This is, of course, a very strange kind of freezer because normally we are used to black having a knight on f6, <clears throat> which is then under attack by a queen, let's say, on f3 or h4 or c3. But here it's completely different. Of course, the bishop is untouchable. If the bishop is taken, white would win the queen. But of course, the bishop on h6 is positioned very insecurely. So is it sustainable, you might ask? Well, indeed it is. 
What can Black do? He played the best move, g6. Let's first have a look at bishop e7 in order to castle. But this is not working. Bishop f3. Well, if you castle now with black, you lose your queen, obviously. So you have to prepare it by playing c6, preventing bishop d5. But now after queen e2, castling wouldn't be possible as after bishop h5, the queen is under attack. Only move to protect the queen is g6, but now we won the exchange. And then also the game, finally, because this position is clearly won for white. Now, after bishop h6, black's best choice is actually what happened, the game, g6. And now queen d2 is maintaining the bishop on h6. Now knight a6 was what happened. Black intended to castle queen side. The alternative, of course, is to take the bishop. Queen takes. And now let's look at two lines, knight c6 and queen f8. Starting with a knight c6. Takes, takes. Now a very strong move happens, rook d1. This is better than castling short. I, I will tell you in a second why. Queen f8, and black has to get rid of the queen if he wants to castle kingside. Queen f4, and now imagine white would have played me mechanically a uh, short side castling instead of rook d1. Then black would have the move queen d6 available. So rook d1 not only activates the rook, but it is also a prophylactic measure against queen d6. Queen f7 intending to castle, which finally happens, hallelujah. But after rook f1, black is lost. For instance, if he plays bishop e6 in order to develop his bishop, white plays queen e4. Now, how to defend the pawn c6? Difficult, right? If c5, then queen c6. Now, queen takes c5 is uh, not uh, to be um, prevented. And after queen takes c5, the pawns on c7 and a7 would be very weak. So this is a one position for white. If instead of uh, bishop e6, black plays rook e8, we play h4, making some air for the king, preventing g5, and also enabling us to play h4, h5 later on in order to soften up black's king side. Let's say bishop e6, Black has to do something, and now queen d4 is strong, intending bishop f3, after which the c6 pawn would be under pressure. This position is won because black has just too many soft spots. All the red pawns are weak, and the king is also exposed, as the pawn shield already is quite loose in front of the king. So the other move after queen takes h6 would be um, queen f8 immediately. Then we have queen f4. Now you can exchange queens, but you are not happy with what follows with black. Takes, takes, and now we see the problem, knight b5. Threatening knight c7, winning the rook, but also threatening knight takes d6. This is winning for white. So after queen f4, a better try might be queen f7. But after castles, castles, rook f1, novelty, uh, knight c6, bishop f3, white is, of course, threatening bishop d5, but also there's pressure on the knight and on <clears throat> the, the whole queen side. So if the knight takes, um, c takes d4, how is black going to develop his pieces? There is pressure on the pawn c7 in case black wants to play bishop uh, d7. Black cannot play bishop e6. Well, maybe it wouldn't make any sense because white could push d45, but much better than that would be rook takes e6, queen takes e6, bishop d5, winning the queen. And then there's also pressure on <clears throat> the pawn um, b7 and the king is quite exposed so white is winning here as well 
Coming back to the game, instead of bishop takes h6, black played knight s6. A reasonable move, black um, tries to prepare queenside castling and also the knight would have a splendid square here on c5. Castles, takes, takes. And now black played queen, uh, uh, pardon me, bishop d7 in order to castle queenside. But let's first have a look at queen f8. Sticking to the other plan to castle short. Queen d2, queen g7, and now there's a very strong move for white c5, exclamation mark. Let's say black is taking the pawn. Knight takes c5, bishop c4, preventing black from castling into safety. What can black do? The king is now caught in the middle of the board. Check. And now after rook 81, I think the engine says something like plus 5, plus 6 for white. This is typical, I think knight e6 check is a direct threat. Di direct threat. But even if now king c8, you have problems with your rooks, with the coordination of your rooks. They cannot be brought into play. They cannot coordinate. And, and white is just too dominant in this position. It's a clear win for white. After c5, black could castle. That is a safer option. But now white plays it slow. He takes a knight, um, doubling the pawns. So we have now two weak pawns. But what he achieved is a very dominant knight on d4. This knight is so strong because the pawn on c5 is uh, blocking black c pawn. It cannot be expelled by c5. And this knight d4 dominates black's bishop. Black's bishop has nowhere to go, right? Well, bishop d7 might be possible, but after c6, what is black playing then? This is completely hopeless for black. White is winning. Now let's go back to the game. After queen h6, black tried to castle queenside and actually managed to do so. Now, unfortunately for the beauty of this game, white committed a mistake. He played bishop f3. A logical move, but it is a mistake, nonetheless. Now, the best move would have been rook fb1, attacking the b pawn. Why rook fb1? I show you with this line here. Knight c5, defending the pawn, still intending to castle, but now knight b3. It's a strong move, challenging this knight on c5. Takes, takes, and now you see that the rook had to stay on a1. That's why we played rook f2, b1. Now there's pressure on the pawn a7. Now if a6, in order to castle, we play b4, and castling wouldn't be such a great choice now because we can pray open the position with b4, b5. We have a pawn lever available. White is winning here. If instead of a6, black plays queen f8, queen f4, queen d6, we check and then finally net a pawn winning because black has no compensation for the minus pawn. After rook fb1, the longer variation is castling queenside here. And now comes a very strong move. Queen to c1, exclamation mark. Such moves are quite easy to overlook because the queen is completely switching the sector. The queen is supposed to be played to b2 or a3, depending on what follows now. Such maneuvers are not that easy to spot. Let's have a look at, at the two moves, rook e8 or queen e7. Rook e8, bringing the rook into play, queen b2, threatening check, checkmate on b2. B7. So now black could play b6, but after queen a3, as now the knight a6 is loose, the knight cannot move because of queen takes a7, of course, so king b7, but now we check. c6, knight b5, strong move. Black can do nothing about knight d6 winning at least the exchange, but I think it's it's just more than that because the knight on a6 would drop off. This is completely crushing black. So after queen b2, 
b6 is not doing the job black has to play knight c5 but after queen a3 attacking the knight on c5 and the pawn on a7 black has to seal the a file with knight a4 now we play bishop f3 attacking the pawn on b7 so everything is pretty much forced b6 and now c5 is a very strong move well the pawn cannot take obviously cannot open the b file here because of bishop b7 check um, the knight cannot take because of queen takes a7 and uh, yeah this black cannot really react to the threat c6 or knight c6 he is completely lost here the other move after queen c1 exclamation mark is queen e7 so now the queen wants to help out on the queen side now there's a strong move rook takes b7 but it is not the only move c5 here would also win but the best move is a annihilation sacrifice rook b7 destroying uh, the pawn shield around black's king king has to take check king c8 of course not king a8 because of bishop f3 check and now queen b2 it's a silent move but of course with a very strong threat of queen b7 check made the only move black has now is to try to seal the b file now white of course cannot play queen takes b4 exchanging queens with a minus exchange that would be suicide he also does not want to play c takes b4 closing the b file then black would survive now the move c5 is the solution to all of white's problems if you want to name it like this c5 is super strong it's preparing queen takes b4 so queen takes c5 only move and now bishop a6 check happens knight cannot take because if that happens queen b7 would be checkmate so king b8 only move moving the king into the pin so the knight before is pinned now which allows us to play queen a3 okay the king has to move away to the other side and now we can play rook takes b4 threatening uh, bishop b7 check now after bishop c8 there's hardly anything else uh, white can liquidate with rook b8 check uh, that's a discovered attack with a check king b8 queen c5 bishop takes a6 and now after knight c6 followed by knight takes d8 white is ahead in terms of material and clearly winning yeah that would have been the move uh, rook f to b1 but in the game white played bishop f3 that's the mistake castles and now white is committing another mistake he could still be clearly better by playing queen e3 which he didn't after let's say rook h e8 white could destroy black by taking on b7 we had this motive before this time the queen will arrive on the long diagonal check like this see the maneuver queen e3 the queen had to be played there in order to be able to be placed on f3 which of course is very powerful now what can black do against queen a8 nothing eh? c6 but after knight c6 it's game over so after queen e3 um the only move black has available here is queen takes c4 but white continues with rook b1 attacking the b pawn b6 only move bishop e2 attacking the queen the queen has only one square to go because of bishop a6 threatening queen a4 now queen f3 threatening queen a8 check c6 takes 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 everything is forced here by the way queen takes f6 and finally the dust has settled white has an extra pawn and black is 
uh, still having his king very exposed on b8 so white has a clear advantage but this position here is, is very dynamic, very difficult, even for grandmasters. So White committed another mistake. He played a logical move, but a bad one. Logical moves can be bad, right? Um, by playing Rook Fb1 in this position. Black could have uh, now equalized with Knight C5, defending the B-pawn, and after Knight B3, takes, takes, Bishop f5, attacking the b1 rook, thus preventing rook takes a7, rook e1, a6. White still has the initiative, but the engine already indicates that the game will steer towards equality. So Blake has to play some accurate moves, but in the end it will be more or less equal. Instead of knight c5, however, Black played c6. Also a quite logical move. Black wants to blunt uh, the bishop. And now white should have played queen e3. <clears throat> Once more this move, queen e3. Um, after rook d e8, there is a strong move, knight b5 available to white. That's uh, very, very powerful. Now after c takes b5, queen a7, black would be lost the queen side would have fallen in this variation. So black instead has to capture the queen in order to make the attack stop. But now he loses the exchange. Check, king c7, knight takes f7. Now you see both rooks are under attack. You can only save one of them. And this position is plus equal but on the higher end so it's um, maybe 0.6 uh, pawn units. White has a very good uh, position here. Instead of queen e3, white played queen c1. Rook e8, queen b2. <clears throat> that is uh, of course the wrong error. Let me just correct this. This is the, the correct er uh, error to, to draw here. Queen b7 checkmate is threatening. Now black should have and could have played bishop e6. The queen now defends the pawn b7. After knight c6, b c6, bishop c6, um, the best move now would be bishop c4 takes, takes, queen a3 attacking the, um, not attacking the knight, but putting the knight under some pressure. Queen c7, black's king is a bit exposed, so the queen <clears throat> comes for his protection. Rook e1, takes, takes, knight c5, queen b4, bishop f7. This position is almost equal, but is of course more difficult for black to play because black has his king very exposed here. So this is what black could have done with actual play. Instead, black now blundered and gave the game away for good. He played bishop f5, double question mark. Now, maybe you want to look for yourself. How can you win here with white? It's a forced line. The motive is um, overloading the queen. So the queen here has to be overloaded. It is already engaged, not on c7, on, on b7. You see the queen is engaged on b7. Now how can we distract the queen? Well, white now did see that because this is easy for a grandmaster. Maybe black has been in time trouble here, overlooking this. Bishop f5, bishop h5, very easy. The queen cannot take the bishop. And now I show you the rest of the game uh, um, in high speed. After bishop e8, of course, white has an extra exchange. Uh, the game is decided. I show you the rest very quickly. Black could do nothing here to get back into the game. White now played accurately until the very end. Check. Netting another pawn. Okay, black threatening checkmate. 
but this is easy to parry by checking here and now playing rook d2. This was it. This was the game. I hope it was entertaining for you. I hope you learned something about the Mikenos variation. If you play c4, this might be something for you. And also, maybe I gave you some inspiration regarding um, the first move. Or if you're a d4 player, maybe you want to add c4 or knight f3 to your d4 repertoire. This will add additional strengths because of the metagame benefits I have described in the introduction. That was it. Have a good day. Bye bye.